This is a fully grown boa constrictor, a powerful predator and one of the most infamous reptiles on the planet. Boas are feared by people all over the world, and the myths and legends that surround them would make you think that an encounter with one of these snakes would leave you in about the same position as this iguana here. But like so many of life's most interesting stories, there is a lot more to this one than you have been led to believe. And the truth will change how you see boa constrictors forever. The tropical dry forests of Ecuador are among the most biodiverse places on Earth, and are home to more animal species than most people ever realize. But there's a catch. This is also one of the country's most endangered habitats, as over 96% of Ecuador's dry forests have been destroyed for human use. Here, human and animal conflict has reached a boiling point, as more and more wildlife is forced to live right alongside people. And at the center of it all are species like the boa constrictor, whose dangerous and aggressive reputation leads many people to believe that we cannot coexist with them safely. This idea is what we are going to disprove today. My name is Harrison, and this is Evan. We're twin brothers following our dream to share the true life stories of the animals we love to help you become an insider in the natural world. To investigate the real story of the boa constrictor and find out if they're actually dangerous to people or not, we have come to our good friend Emilio's ranch in western Ecuador, as exploring this area provides an ideal opportunity to experience the conflict firsthand. The ranch represents a perfect intersection between human and animal usage, as it contains both active human settlements and stands of good natural habitat, meaning that interactions between people and wildlife are all but inevitable. Boas are at the forefront of the issue here because they are one of the ranch's largest and most conspicuous predators, which has led them to be vilified by many of the locals due to a fear of harm to themselves or their livestock. Now, there is an advantage in looking for a highly feared animal in a place with lots of people around, as we are not the only ones keeping an eye out for them. We're able to receive tips from the residents when boas are spotted on the property, and this local knowledge proved to be invaluable to our search, as we were alerted by a worker that a boa had been spotted in one of the ranch's chicken coops earlier that day. With our hopes high, we quickly set off to see if we could get face to face with this legendary snake. All right, this is the spot where we were told by some locals that a boa was spotted earlier today. Now, by the sounds of things, the chickens have been freaking out for as long as we've been here, so it's possible that the boa's still around. We should poke around in all the corners. That's a good place for them to hide. I don't see any. We have to look up and down. You see her yet? I do not. I was told look in the roof. Yep. It doesn't look like there's that many places where she could be. Oh, there, she's right here. No way. Yep, she's right behind this barrel. All right, let me see if I can pull this out of the way and you'll see her. Wow, there she is. Whoa. Ooh, all right, all right. Um, we want to get her out of here. Come here, honey. Come here, are you? So dark in here. Oh, all right. Give me a nice strike there. There, got her. All right. Nice. All right, she's pretty big, actually. Not as big as they'll get. Let me get the, the hook properly positioned. There we go. Let's get her out of here into somewhere more controlled and take a look at this amazing snake. All right, let's get her. Nice, that's what I wanted. Woo. You're okay, you're okay. Wow, she's a little bit upset. But that's understandable, I just pulled her out. She was probably hunting in there. Let's get her somewhere more controlled and take a look. This actually looks like a pretty good spot right here, bro. We would just wanna sit down and we'll get this girl under control. Here we go. Now this is the black-tailed boa. And this is an interaction that we really wanted to have. The question we're trying to answer here is if boas are dangerous. And as you can see, if you interpret just the defensiveness that we're seeing, you may think so. 
But don't prejudge these snakes just yet. This interaction is incredibly scary for this animal. It's easy for her to interpret this as a predation event. After all, an animal that's many times her size came up and picked her up right off the ground and took her away from where she was hunting. So she's probably thinking that she's about to get eaten. So it's totally understandable for this animal to be a little defensive. She has no idea what's going on. She would interpret us as a potential predator, a snake of this size, could be dealing with a number of predators here on the ranch, things like dogs or pigs or even humans, would be able to take out a snake of this size. So this animal would definitely think that a human could potentially harm her. Now if you want to come in here, bro, what we really want to do is get her off the hook and in hand properly and see if we can calm her down just a little bit to give you an idea of the true temperament of these animals. Because it is not all angry and aggressive as you might think. Now we have her on the ground here because we were getting a couple B-roll shots, and she's assumed this defensive posture that's really characteristic for snakes like this. But what we want to demonstrate is that these animals are not out to get people, she's only trying to defend herself here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick her up again. Come here, sweetheart. That's it. This animal is scared. And if I can get her to calm down, then we will be able to prove that boas are actually really interesting animals that you do not need to fear. They are non-venomous, so a bite from this animal would not be harmful in any way. And one thing that I've noticed already in just working with her a little bit is that she is incredibly strong. These animals are very powerful constrictors, as you may have guessed. And she really does not like me going near her tail right now, which is, again, very understandable. Here we go. That's a little better, sweetheart. That's a little better. Now this is what we actually want to see. If you support their body weight, snakes will very often calm down because they lose that sensation of being carried off. But as soon as she sees that I'm not grabbing her, she has no reason to be defensive. And therefore, they have no reason to bite you. And this, I think, proves it better than anything. This animal is just trying to figure out what's going on. That's all it is. They're not out to get you. What we want to prove with this interaction is that living alongside predatory species like the black-tailed boa is completely possible and also extremely important to do. Boas are top predators, and what that means is they are exerting control over the entire ecosystem here on the ranch. And in doing so, they are providing invaluable services that very few other animals are able to do. There are birds of prey and some mammals that will be able to act as predators in this ecosystem as well, but there are very few that live here as consistently and therefore exert that control as regularly as the black-tailed boa does. This animal will probably be spending its entire life, which can be 20 to 30 years in the wild, on this ranch. They really don't move all that far. So for its entire life, this animal will be able to control prey populations and pest populations like rodents. Exactly. Boas are generalist predators, so they'll eat all kinds of animals out here on the ranch. They'll take lots of small mammals, especially the rodents like Harrison mentioned. They'll eat frogs and lizards and birds. So with all those different prey sources that these guys need to survive, it's actually a good indication of the health of the ecosystem that we're seeing boas here at all. What that indicates is there's enough prey to support large predators like the boa, and it gives us a sense that this ecosystem is at least healthy enough to support some top-level consumers. They're one of the most iconic snakes that can be found in all of the coastal dry forests, so it's actually very exciting to see this boa and get to interact with it in such a direct way. Absolutely. And speaking of the coastal dry forest, that is one of the most endangered habitats here in Ecuador, and with all of that habitat destruction comes a lot of human and animal conflict. Because think about it, when you destroy their habitat, animals like boas have nowhere else to go except to move into human areas. So we can't then turn around and blame them for being here and think of them as harmful or dangerous to us. We've proven that they're not dangerous. She may be scared, 
but she's not attacking for no reason. She's not coming after us. We had to put her in this position for her to even feel defensive at all. If we had left her alone, as we recommend any person do, she will not approach us at all. Exactly. We have to remember that these animals were here first. It's humans that came into these habitats, modified them for our own use, and effectively pushed these animals out of their homes. And when you consider it that way, you can see that it's really humans that have the responsibility to take care of these animals and their habitat to ensure that the interactions we have are positive. And as we're seeing here, that is completely possible as long as we regulate our behavior, we can actually interact with these animals in a mutually beneficial way. Living alongside predators is never easy, but these animals deserve so much respect, just in my opinion, because of how cool they are. How can you not love a boa constrictor like say. this? If you're willing to get over your fear and learn more about these animals, they're actually really cool. I think this is a beautiful snake. It's one that was one of my top targets that brought us to Ecuador in the first place. So to be able to see this animal here, it's in good health, it's in a habitat that's able to support it in the long term, is actually a really good sign for a very impressive species. This little boa has been such a treat to work with, but it is definitely time to get her back towards the barn where she was hunting. Because honestly, we don't need to relocate this animal because where she was hunting is actually a great spot for her to be. There's lots of rodents in there. It's helping out the farm by taking away the animals that would be eating the chicken feed. So, we are just gonna get her right back where she was. Come on, sweetheart. Now the chickens are not gonna like this, but this snake is doing both the ecosystem and the ranch itself a great service. So we do not want to interrupt that. All right, chickens. And back where you were. See you later, sweetheart. All right. Sharing our space with predators is an understandably daunting prospect, but if we don't learn to coexist with these animals, we risk destabilizing the incredible ecosystems that we both rely on. We hope that seeing our interaction with the boa has proven that living alongside predatory animals is totally achievable if we choose to do so. It's important to remember that boas pose no actual threat to people if we just leave them alone and really the only time they will be defensive is if we approach them first. The reality is that it's humans that really control the interactions between people and wildlife. Most animals have no interest in interacting with people if it can be avoided, and when left undisturbed, they will just go about their lives in peace. You don't necessarily have to love every snake, spider, or other predator that crosses your path, but as long as we respect the important roles that they play in their ecosystem and give them the space they need to survive, we can effectively mitigate any potential conflict. These kinds of issues aren't limited to just snakes, though. Human and animal conflicts exist all over the world, and one that gets a whole lot of attention back in the US is the interaction between humans and American alligators. If you want to hear the real story about these iconic reptiles, check out this video where we head down to Florida to investigate it for ourselves. And with that, we hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you in the next one.